I was going to hold you to it. That was facetious. Oh, see, I'm, I'm very good, at, I'm very bad at detecting that. So, um, I uh, have finally written the exam, and uh, I kept the same format, but I did change the point distribution. So, in the interest of giving you more time to do things, I made more short answer and fewer long answer. All right. So the breakdown of points is that the first section is worth a total of 15 points. That that, that hasn't changed from before. The second section is worth 50 points, and the last section is worth um, 35 points. So there are three longer questions uh, there. There's no calculations, obviously. And uh, hopefully that will all work for you. So um, don't forget, we'll have the exam in here tomorrow at 4. And please distribute yourselves like you did last time. You're really great about doing that every other seat thing. Um, so start with, uh, just a reminder, seat number 1, then 3, 5, and then 1, 3, 5, et cetera, and then 1, 3, 5, et cetera over there. And we'll get started for the exam. Clear as mud? Questions before I start today? Yes, sir. The review session is posted. Yeah, it's on the schedule page. Yep, so it's there. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay, so where the material starts. So it's actually marked on the web page. Well, let me just show you. So if we go back. Here, you can see on the page, uh, the material, uh, exam one material ends with the start of enzyme controls. So when you look on enzyme controls, that's where the material starts. So it's marked here. New material for exam two starts here. Then the end of the material for exam two is marked right here. Ends at the end of RNA synthesis. And so when you go to uh, here, uh, end of exam two material here, start of exam three material here. Okay? Okay. So hopefully we're all on the same page with that. And we're off and running. Well, let's um, finish up protein synthesis. We're almost there. In fact, we've pretty much finished protein synthesis. There's just a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about relative to protein synthesis um, because your um, book has them there at this point. And um, they are uh, something, one of which we've talked about before, post-translational modification. So post-translational modification means that these are changes that are being made to a protein after it's been synthesized. So a real good example we talked about before was a zymogen. A zymogen was something that was synthesized in an inactive form. And then by cleaving of peptide bonds, the zymogen was activated. Okay? Chymotrypsinogen was, an at, was a zymogen, for example. Okay? Now, same thing's happening here. Uh, just another example. And the example that I have for you is that of insulin. Insulin is a hormone that's in our body. And it has a, an unusual, I, I shouldn't say unusual, it's an interesting uh, scheme by which it's processed. So insulin is made um, by a longer, uh, in, in the longer form, by something uh, into a form that we call pre-pro-insulin. Pre-pro, all right? So that suggests there's actually two things that's going to happen, the pre and the pro. So the pre part refers to the fact that the insulin is made with a longer tail than it needs. So a protease comes along after pre-pro insulin has been made, and that end of the tail gets clipped off. This clipping off of the end of tails is not uncommon in proteins. It actually relates to um, their being secreted, which uh, insulin is. Okay? We don't need to worry about the details for, of that for the moment. After pre-pro-insulin has had its tail removed, it's, it's known as pro-insulin. Pro-insulin uh, is then processed, and the processing of pro-insulin involves cleavage of some peptide bonds, one right there and one right there. You'll notice that before those peptide bonds are cleaved, disulfide bonds have formed. So this guy has started a folding process before the um, uh, final processing occurs. Then clipping of those peptide bonds leaves insulin in its final form. And that final form is two chains that are linked by disulfide bonds. And that's what insulin actually looks like in your body. So it starts out as a pre-pro, gets clipped to a, to a pro, and then finally the cleavage of peptide bonds converts it to uh, simply an insulin. Make sense? Okay. 
Let's see. Um, one of the things that happens, oh yes, uh, Lynette. Was there any that we were supposed to know through the protease? No, I'm, I'm not expecting you to know the protease, no. Unless you want to have another name memorized. No, no. S solid no on that? Solid no, okay. All right, so one of the things to think about with proteins is proteins are not kept in the cell forever. We've seen that RNA is not kept in the cell forever. RNA is made and it's degraded because they said we don't want to always have that RNA available to be translated. There might be times when the cell wouldn't want to make a particular protein. So RNA is made and broken down. Similarly, proteins are made and broken down. They have lifetimes. And this is kind of a protective mechanism of the cell. Kind of a protective mechanism. One is we wouldn't want to have a, a protein that was damaged causing additional damage to the cell. So proteins that are damaged can be targeted for destruction. Second, by destroying a protein, a cell is exerting some control over what that protein does. So if a protein is made for a short period of time and then degraded, the cell uh, is, is uh, able to have a different kind of control than if it were made and it just sat around for a long period of time. Well, the point of all this is that there is a structure that exists inside of cells that breaks down proteins. And the structure is called a proteasome, P-R-O-T-E-A-S-O-M-E. -E. Proteasome is a complex that chews up proteins. So basically, when the cell has unwanted proteins, it chews them up in there. How does the cell know which proteins to degrade? Well, there's a targeting mechanism that's used by cells, and it involves the attachment of a short little unit called ubiquitin. Ubiquitin is a little peptide that gets linked to a protein that targets it for destruction. Okay? It targets, so when it's attached to a protein, it targets that protein for destruction. That protein will then go to the proteasome and be broken down and will not be around anymore. Ubiquitin. Okay? It's ubiquitin. Ubiquitin is a flag that says destroy this protein, and that protein is gone. Okay. Now, uh, let's see, what do I want to say there? Nothing. It, it, it's attached to the protein that's going to be destroyed. That's correct. Uh, good question. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Don't know. Yeah, cells, uh, there's a variety of ways that can happen. So cells have ways of recognizing, for example, damaged proteins. Um, aspartic acid turns out to be an amino acid that is relatively unstable. And so there are enzymes that will recognize damaged aspartic acids and target that. In other cases, uh, there may be specific attachment things for specific proteins because the cell wants to control how much of them that they have. So it's, it's, a, it's a rather complicated uh, um, uh, um, setup, as you might imagine. OK. Well, the last thing I want to say are some other considerations. And one of these, uh, I'm only going to talk about one of these, and that is the 21st amino acid. We've talked about 20 amino acids appearing in proteins, but now there's always an exception to every rule, right? Well, it turns out there actually is an exception to this rule. And this is a very interesting and unusual amino acid. It's called selenocysteine. As its name uh, suggests, it's a, modif it's a modified form of cysteine. If we had a sulfur right there, that would be cysteine. In this case, though, selenium has replaced the sulfur atom. <clears throat> now. I said that when we had modified amino acids, they're almost always modified after they're put into a protein. This is the exception. This guy is the exception. Now, the question is, if it's not modified after it gets in, how does it get in? Okay. Well, let me just, before I tell you that, tell you a couple things about this. One, this is the reason that we need selenium in our diet. Selenium is a very, very toxic substance. We need it in very, very tiny amounts because there's a handful of enzymes that use and need selenocysteine. Okay? So they have to have this guy, and, and because they have to have this guy, that's why you have to have a very tiny amount of selenium in your diet. Selenium, I emphasize, is a poisonous substance. 
Okay? So very, very tiny amounts of this you need to have in your diet. The uh, way this guy gets in the cell is that there's an unusual um, uh, transfer RNA that is made that can, in some cases, actually form a base pair with one of the stop codons. It can actually base pair with one of the stop codons. Remember yesterday I said there were no tRNAs that would do that? I lied a little bit. On rare occasions, this selenocysteine containing tRNA can form a base pair with a stop codon. The one that it usually works on is UGA. When that happens, translation does not stop, but in fact, selenocysteine gets put in and then translation continues. It's an odd process, it's a very unusual process, but some proteins absolutely have to have um, that um, uh, component. Okay, yes, sir. Is, is that how what controls? So, I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand the question. So the tRNA that holds selenocysteine will occasionally base pair with a stop codon. That's correct. So does that increase production translation? No, it just simply allows selenocysteine to get in. Without that, selenocysteine would never make it into uh, a protein. As I said, it's an odd process. It's a rare process, but some enzymes absolutely require it. Not very many, a few. Yes, sir. Uh, in animals that need more so, uh, selenium than, uh -huh. say, humans, yep. um, would that be because they need larger quantities of enzymes that are yeah. selenium? It's a very good question. His question is, if we have animals that need more selenium than humans, is it because they use and need more selenocysteine? And the answer is most likely yes. Because as far as we know, this is the only use of, of selenium in the body. Yes, sir. Uh, what prevents selenocysteine from inserting itself into a normal uh, stop codon? From a, for, uh, insert, inserting itself into what, Matt? For a stop codon that's just trying to stop the transcription. Yeah. It, so his question is, how uh, does the cell keep from putting selenocysteine in wherever there's a stop codon so that basically nothing stops? I think that's, that's sort of your question, right? Okay, so as I said, it's a complicated process. One, it generally only works on one of the codons. And so in us, it usually works on a UGA. And the second part of that is it usually only works on very infrequently. So if it happened very frequently, then we would never stop at UGA, and we would, in fact, put selenocysteine in wherever that occurred. But it, it occurs very infrequently, and there's some reasons why it occurs in the proteins that it does. It's kind of complicated, which I won't go into here. In, into here. But it turns out their, their messenger RNAs have some unusual structures in them, which favors the, the overlooking of the stop codon. Okay? Okay, yes? What is it used for? So one of the enzymes that uh, requires this is something called thyroidoxin reductase. Thyroidoxin is a compound in our bodies that is necessary as an antioxidant. So without thyroidoxin reductase, we can't reduce thyroidoxin. And when that happens, the cell is much more prone to oxidative damage. So that's a pretty important thing. There are other ones that, for which it's known. That's probably the most important enzyme that actually uses selenocysteine. OK. Well, I thought I'd try something a little different today. I've been singing and singing, and uh, I've demonstrated to you that I can't sing. So I thought I would try to uh, bring in a recording of uh, a professional recording of a song. So instead of me singing today, I thought I would have one of my students, who's very good at this, um, actually sing the song. So bear with me. Okay, so first of all, we've got that.